All right, guys, welcome back. So in the last video, we learned how to add a caption, add a logo, and how to change the background screen of our game window. In this video, we are going to learn how to add an image to our game window, which is pretty cool and pretty easy because of Pygame. But first of all, let's look at the player PNG, which we are going to add inside our game window, which is kind of a spaceship, which is shooting beams out of its arms. So if you want this image, you can just go to flaticon.com and download this image. Obviously you can use any other image you want, but I'm just gonna stick with this image and you can go to download collection and obviously search for arcade space over here if you want this exact image and then choose PNG and choose the 64 by 64 pixel. Obviously you can resize it in Pygame, but I have seen that it's better if you already get the image of the size that you want. In this case, I want the 60 64 by 64 pixel version, so I'm gonna take that and I've already added it to my project over here. So after you have done that over here, then you can come back and we can start adding the image. But before we even start that, I just want to discuss what is this 800 and 600 I have put over here. I've already discussed this, but this 800 is the width and the 600 is the height. I think I might have said something wrong about this uh, in the starting videos. Uh, this 800 is actually the width and not the height and the 600 is the height. So if you look at our window, this is the X axis. You can think of this window as an X and Y axis window. So if you go from left to right, this is an X axis. And if you could go from top to bottom, this is a Y axis. So it's always starts from zero comma zero, which is at the top left corner. And then we, as we go on the right hand side, the X value starts to increase and on this top right corner, the X value is 800 because that stands for width. And now if you go from top to bottom, the value of Y increases while the X value remains the same. So over here, the value is 600, but the value of X is zero. So if you don't understand it a lot, don't worry about it. Just think of it as this left, left to right is basically X. And the value right now of this whole window is 800 in terms of its width and the value from top to bottom is 600 and uh, the value at the bottom is 600 and if you want to go into into the middle it's approximately 300 not approximately exactly it's 300 so why i'm telling you this uh, because we want to place our image in a particular position so that's why we need to give it exact coordinates obviously you can experiment with coordinates a little bit but we'll go into it so let me just add a comment over here so that we know that we are talking about the player and then we need to add the player image which is pretty easy like we have done it in the in terms of the logo. So let's just copy and paste this over here and change the UFO to player.png and then we are going to give it the X and Y axis where we want the image to be positioned. So let's create two more variables. Let's call this player X and uh, we are going to give it the value of 370. And I'm going to go into why we give these values to player X and player Y. So these variables basically represents the coordinates that we want. And over this, we are going to give the Y the value of 480. So why have we done that? So if we look at this window, we want the player image to appear somewhere over here, which is exactly the half of the screen width. So we want it to appear at the starting of the game. At least we want it to appear in the middle and we want it to appear in the lower half of this window. So the Y axis should be closer to 600 because this point is 600. If you guys remember this lower part, so we want it to appear a little bit above it. So we can give it a value of about 480 or 450, whatever you guys want. And then the X value, we are giving it 370, which is a little bit half, less than half of the width. So the width is 800. And if we go a little bit less than this, this is 370 because we have to consider the size of the image itself. If we give it exactly the value of 400, then it's not going to fit perfectly. That's why we have given these values. So you can see that the 370 is somewhat half of 800 and this 480 is close to 600. Obviously when we change the values, you will understand this concept a little bit better and feel free to change these values and see the effect it has. Now after this, uh, we are just going to create a function and we are going to call it player. Now I'm going to go into why we are creating a function, but let's just create the function for now. And then we are going to use a uh, method known as screen dot blit. So blit basically means to draw. So we are drawing an image of player onto our screen. And this screen is actually known as the surface of our game. We'll go into what it is a surface a little bit later. I know I'm saying that a lot, but 
uh, it's not relevant to this video, but just understand that we are drawing this image of player.png on our game window by using this method known as dot blit. And dot blit, blit actually means to draw. So we, after loading the image, you also need to draw it on the screen. So that's why we are using the screen dot blit method. And over here, it requires two parameters or values. The first uh, value is of the image itself. So we are going to give it the image. And the second thing it requires are the coordinates. So we are going to give it the coordinates of player X and player Y. So the X and Y coordinates. After this, we are going to call it. Uh, I'm just going to ask you guys a question. Where do you think we should call this player? We want this player to appear in every frame of the screen. We don't ever want this player to disappear. If you guys said inside this while loop, you guys are correct. So we are going to call this player method inside over here. So let's just call it and we're going to just call it over here like this and make sure that this player method is called after the screen dot fill method. Otherwise, this player won't appear on the screen. Why do you think that is? This is because the screen is drawn first and then on top of the screen, we draw a player or a spaceship. If the opposite was true, then the spaceship would be drawn underneath the skin, the screen, not the skin. What? then it would be drawn underneath the screen. So that is why we always want it to be drawn after screen dot fill. Actually, let's change. Let's remove this position to from there to over here somewhere so that we guys know where this. Uh, so because we are going to be adding a lot of images and stuff, that's why we need to make sure that this screen dot fill is just above everything and all the other things are drawn on top of the screen. All right, guys, so this is pretty much it. Let me just add another comment. I don't know where it disappeared. This standard for RGB and red, green, blue, just to make sure that you guys still remember what this is. All right, so this is looking pretty good and our player should appear on the screen. So let's run it and then we'll just go through all of this stuff again to see what is happening. All right, so as you can see, our image has appeared on the screen. So first we loaded the image in this player image variable, we pointed out the X and Y values and the X and Y values were dependent on the screen size that we gave over here, 800 and 600, because we wanted it to appear in the, let me just close this one, the old one. All right. And because we wanted it to appear in the middle, that is why we gave it the value of approximately half of the screen. So for example, if I gave it the value of, let's say just to experiment, Let's say we gave it the value of, uh, let's say 750, that is close to right hand side and we reloaded it and uh, let's wait for it to appear. As you can see, it appeared on the right hand side. So you can see that the X value has increased and similarly, if we decreased it to, a, let's say about 30, I'm just showing you this to you guys so that you guys can understand the X and Y positions clearly. You can see that it appears on the left hand side. So let's change it to back to about 370. And similarly in Y, if we change this to maybe 30, you will see that it appears on the top of the screen instead of at the bottom of the screen. So as we get, go down, we are getting closer to that 600 value. So we are going to from zero to 600. So let's change it back to 480. And hopefully now you guys have understood properly the meaning of this X and Y axis. So anyways, after that, we created this function known as uh, player and inside that we drew this uh, image onto the screen and it required two values the image the x and y coordinates and then to make sure that this player is always shown on the screen we added it to this wild game loop infinite loop so guys this is pretty much it for this video um, i might be repeating a lot of things a lot of times it might be a little bit irritating for some guys, but hopefully you guys understood it properly. In the next video, we are going to learn how to move this uh, player from left hand side to right hand side using our arrow keys on our keyboard. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, let's wait for that. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.